The problems for my videos can be downloaded from my website, tonybell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link. You'll see there's no sign in, no sign up, nothing like that. Just a hundred plus pages of accounting exercises. Many of the exercises are free and open, about 40%. And if you're working through those and finding you're getting great value out of them, you might consider joining and getting a channel membership that has access to the other 60% of the videos. All right, let's jump into today's exercise. Let's take a look at problem 52A. We're asked to do the high low method, the scatter graph method, and the least squares regression method to deal with cost data. Now, something interesting and challenging, this is the challenge of module five, is we have this cost information and it's a little bit all over the map. And what we want to do is tame it. We want to bring it into the formula for a line. Now, these costs are not linear necessarily. We want to tame them and make them linear so we can make some judgment about our cost information. And that's what this is all about. High, low, scatter graph, least squares regression is taking some nonlinear costs and making them look like a line. Now, why do we do that? Well, of course, companies have pure variable cost, and that's a linear cost, right? It's a line. And they have pure fixed cost. So again, the variable cost is like the cost of tires for a car. Well, every car has the same amount of tires. If I make one car, it's got, you know, $500 worth of tires, two cars, $1,000 worth of tires. It's a linear cost. Same thing with fixed costs, like the rent on my factory building. It doesn't matter if I make one car or 100 cars, I pay the same rent. So those are straightforward and there's no drama there. We learn though, a lot of our costs aren't like that. A lot of our costs behave like, I don't know, maybe like this little staircase, right? Like we saw costs that did this and we saw step fixed costs that were more like this. And I don't know if we did it in the, the problem, I'm, I'm re referencing problem five, uh, one, but there's certainly costs that like curve and do all sorts of weird things. And what um, an assumption we make in management accounting is in the relevant range. So in the range at which this company operates, I'll make this go out a little longer, we can use a straight line as a reasonable estimator for a cost. So for example, with this step variable cost, if I were to just draw a straight line right up the middle, that's good enough for most estimates, most assumptions we're gonna make about the company. We could just draw a line through it. And same thing for this step fixed cost where we can say, okay, well, if I know, you know, every 50 students, I gotta hire a new professor and the class always has 90 students. Well, I know I'm always gonna be in this range of the chart, right? If, if this is, you know, 50 students, I hire a new professor and now I'm up to 90. Uh, if I know I'm always gonna be in this range, well, I can just say, well, through that range, this behaves like a fixed cost. And even the curved cost like this, I can say, well, I'm never operating down here. I'm never making zero units. I'm never making a billion units. My company is always operating kind of between here and here. Well, if I draw a straight line through it, that does a good enough job estimating my cost. So it's kind of a long intro here, but it's a way of saying, okay, we want our costs. We want to we think it's reasonable that most costs can be estimated with a straight line. And as soon as you can make your cost be estimated with a straight line, you can do lots of powerful things. We're gonna learn about it called CVP analysis, cost volume profit analysis, or break even analysis. We'll learn that in mod six. Right now though, is taking a nonlinear cost, and this is nonlinear, and making it into the formula for a line. So the formula for lines is Y equals MX plus B in math. They call Y the dependent variable, X the independent variable, M is the slope, B is the intercept. In accounting though, we don't use that jargon. Y is our total cost. It's the cost of whatever we're looking at. M is our variable cost per unit. So it's our cost per unit of activity. X is the activity level. And B is our fixed cost. So sort of if you've done linear stuff lately, if you're familiar with Y equals MX plus B or Y equals A plus BX, big advantage here. If you sort of have memories of that and you're like, I'm pretty solid on that, this will be easy for you. If you're shaky on it though, I still don't think it's that hard. It just might require some refreshing here.
Okay, so that was a long intro. We're four minutes in. We haven't started the problem. Let's start the problem. We're going to do high-low method here. Danny office supply shows the following data related to shipping costs for the first six months of the year. And we have this data. And again, it's not going to be a perfectly straight line. Uh, we want to massage this to make a perfectly straight line emulate it. The high-low method, that's what we're doing in part one. It says using the high-low method, give me y equals mx plus b estimate the cost formula in y equals mx plus b format um the high low method says well let's just take the highest point on this you know the highest point on the table and the lowest point on the table and draw a line between them and that's going to be our line we'll ignore everything else so let's do that let's take the high activity level whatever month has the highest activity level not cost we ignore cost right now the highest activity level was april so I'm going to make that my high. The lowest activity level was June. I'm going to make that my low. So again, high, low. The high low method says take the high cost, whatever the highest cost, the the uh, yellow highlighted line, the month with the highest activity level, whatever the related cost was. We'll call that high cost minus low cost. I want to be careful here. We could have some month, like if, for example, January had uh, $1,800 cost for some reason. We would ignore it. We're just taking the month with the highest activity level, its cost. So 1500 minus 1100 divided by uh the activity level which is uh the high activity level minus the low activity level and in terms of our graph the cost is y and the number of package shift that's our activity level that's our x and if you're thinking back to a math class this is a rise over run calculation the change in y divided by the change in x gives you the slope of the line it's going to give us our m so this equals m in terms of the formula so let's let's do it and again i think my explanation is over complicating matters i think you will see when you do it it's not that hard it's just there's a lot going on here if you can't remember line math okay high cost minus low cost 1500 minus 1100 it's 400 so 1500 minus 1100 equals 400 that's my numerator my denominator is 130 my high activity minus low activity 130 minus 90 equals 40 and let's remember what this is 400 dollars divided by 40 packages shipped i'll just say packages but we know it's packages shipped so our m is ten dollars per package shipped all right so that is our variable cost per unit it cost me ten dollars per package in additional costs so looking at the formula y equals mx plus b we have y equals now we have the m 10 x plus b we got to solve for b to get our formula for the line and to do it we just plug in either the high or the low point so let's choose the low i'm just randomly choosing the low so i'm going to take june and in june x was 90 y was 1100 so i plug in 1100 as to replace my y 10 is still my m the x is 90 plus b so 1100 equals 10 times 90 is 900 plus b uh, B equals 200. So the answer to part A, Y equals MX plus B, is Y equals uh, M, which was 10, 10X plus uh, 11, no, 200, plus B, 200. So Y equals 10X plus 200. That is my answer to part A. Uh, okay, moving on to I. Using your answer from part A above, assuming in July the company expects to ship 150 packages, what will the cost be? Okay, so it's giving us, this is X, this is the activity level. We have our cost formula, Y equals 10X plus 200. So Y equals 10 in July, X is going to be 150 plus 200. Y equals 1500 plus 200. 
y equals 1700. That's my answer to part i. So we've answered a, and we've answered that like subpart i. Okay, that's it for 52A part one. We've done the high-low method. In the next part of the video, we will do a scatter graph. Thanks so much for watching. If these videos help you, I hope you'll help me, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. The next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.